Today's guest at the Hong Kong sessions, Idel Rodriguez, New York-based artist and illustrator, became world famous for his highly provocative anti-Trump covers for Time magazine and Der Spiegel. Born in Cuba, Idel Rodriguez fled with his family from Fidel Castro's regime to the United States in 1980. Because his father rebelled against the system, they were thrown out of the country, along with thousands of other Cubans. After a traumatic time, they eventually ended up in Key West, where they practically had to start from scratch as political refugees. Rodriguez studied painting at the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. His first visual influences were his childhood in Cuba, the military dictatorship, the economy of scarcity and repression in the communist system. He not only created the iconic Trump covers, but there also was a career before that. Rodriguez worked as an art director at Time magazine for 14 years, where he learned a lot about the political impact of images. He has designed countless posters and book covers and regularly shows his art in galleries worldwide. The internet also amplifies the dissemination of his work. He has put many of his artworks online for free so that they can be downloaded and used at demonstrations. Edel Rodriguez is convinced that powerful illustrations can influence people in ways that words cannot. With his work, he not only wants to stimulate reflection, but also inspire people to rebel against drawbacks. Welcome, Edel. Thank you. Thank you for coming here all the way from Manhattan or from New York. Mm -hmm. The situation for you after you published the Trump covers, did it somehow uh, interfere with your daily life or did you get some threats or hate mails or s I don't know? Yeah, I mean, I've gotten a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of hate mail and a lot of uh, uh, nasty, really nasty comments online. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, uh, it, it hasn't affected me much. And uh, Mentally no. also not? Or no, no, or no. psychologically? I'm, or? No, no. I, I'm, I'm pretty... If anybody can do this, it's me, because I'm yes. not, I'm not yes. phased by anything. That's I don't care, cool. you know. That's I mean, great. I, uh, I... I, I believe in art as a free form of, of, you know, to do whatever you want and say. I think art should challenge everybody and everybody's expectations. And, and at the end of the day, it's, um, it's a painting or a drawing. It's not a bullet or a gun. It's, it's ideas, you know. Yes. And um, you, you should be able to talk about that. I'm not threatening anybody with violence or anything. No, I'm, you're I'm, not. I'm, 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 you know. Uh, if there's any threat, it's the threat of a different idea invading your, your mind. So I believe in, in, in the power of art in such a deep way that, that uh, I, I've got that behind me, you know. Um, the, uh, the only thing that's changed is, is a lot more press coverage, you know. So yeah. uh, a lot more of my time, you know, is spent, uh, you know, going on CNN or getting interviewed or being on, 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 you know, on the phone for a radio interview. Uh, but uh, I, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. I, I'm just doing, I've been doing magazine covers for 20 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and what happened with this is that, that I became the story because I'm, I was an immigrant child yes. and what's happening to immigrant children now in the United States. So you have this immigrant child that grew up to be the person that's making these these covers uh, in, on a national magazine cover about the president, and everybody wants to know what do you think? How'd you do this? You know, um, so I can't say no to that. You know, I feel like when I'm talking, I'm talking for the little kids that are um, stuck in a cage in, in in Texas. So you feel some some sort of responsibility? Yeah, for, absolutely. For them or for society yeah. in total or. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the the main thing that, uh, that drives gets you? me up in the morning and and doesn't. I don't say no to interviews. I don't. Uh, I I if you ask me to go speak somewhere, I'm like, yep, I'm going. And people are always surprised. Oh, wow, you're going to come here? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I feel that yeah, there are. Uh, I'm speaking for for who I was when I was uh, nine years old. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, when I 
came to America, I was really welcomed. Uh, you know, I loved the, everything about the country forever, you know. And, and you just, still do. I still do, but I have a big problem now. <laughs> what is the problem, actually? Uh, the problem is that, that really, to me, America and, and, and that whole process was, a, was a, a dream. It was a very uh, deep thing, the, the, the country that gave you the opportunity and, and Free all this speech, kind of stuff. Free you know. speech. I really I believed in those, all those things. Mm. Uh, that you typically would think of what America is, freedom, welcoming immigrants, welcoming refugees. That was my, you know, what I believed in and what my, my life was for the last, you know, 30-something years. And then along comes this character who's just, you know, spitting on all that, basically. Mm. Uh, and and that's, that's a problem. I think it's going to be a, a problem for many years, and it's going to be hard to, to get rid of that stain. And do you think your work helps to get rid of this situation or to enhance a process that is hidden in society or is it really split? Is it really 50-50? I, I, think, I think, no, I, I try to, to, to do in a lot of my work to, to in these posters and things like that to, to show like this is what we're really about. We're not about this thing. You know, we're about this. This is what it means to be an American. This is this is what many people believe in the United States, actually. Many people do believe that and think that. But then there's this other wing that uh, that doesn't, believe that or if they believe in that they think it's just for them <laughs> or mm. for their uh, specific cause and well, I believe that it, I believe that it's for everybody yeah. you know for immigrants for um, people of various races or whatever so uh, um, you know I, I think it's important so that's why I, I try to talk about it you know did you ever get any reaction from the White House or related people on your work The only thing I, I heard back was from uh, Junior, Donald Jr. <laughs> yeah. I did a cover for Time Magazine, and it was um, Trump is three demolition balls uh, destroying the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he wrote on, on Twitter, like he's like, yeah, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We want to bring this place down. You got something wrong. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's the one time where they figure out they can get a little in there to... to, to um, fight back on it but but in the end it, it he looks like i thought it was funny he, he accepted that his father is a huge orange ball <laughs> he, he's like that's fine that's fine but uh you know it, they're they're not uh, you know i've met people like that my entire life that that they will never accept that anything they're doing or saying is wrong and you know they they just suspend disbelief and i've met people like that Okay, so far so good. I would love to talk about your images. We have many images prepared. We set up a little show in our tiny gallery here and I would love to talk to you about that and ask you some more questions. Sure. So please come with me to the gallery, right over here. Welcome to our gallery. This is your life. <laughs> I would say so, but let's first start here and, and look at the images which I connected with you way before Trump. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful poster of the roots of a band and this was your style you did like 15, 12, 15 years ago when we worked together when I was art director of the Spiegel. That's how I discovered your work through this mm. style, right? Yeah, this is I think from about 2004, mm -hmm. 2005. And uh, this was a portrait of the roots for Esquire magazine. Okay. Um, at that time, I was doing a lot of cultural music, um, theater work, um, a lot of work for the, New, uh, for the New Yorker magazine. I was doing kind of almost a weekly image for the New Yorker on, on, Amer on New York culture. And then since it appeared there, then it, it, it created other cultural possibilities. So I, I would, people would see it there and then they would hire me to do posters for Broadway. Or um, I did uh, posters for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame based uh, on that. So there are basic colors like black, mm -hmm. gray, red. So four, three colors, and of course a little bit white. But this is from, comes from the paper. Yeah, so actually, no, the paper here is yellow. Okay. And then the colors are pastel uh, on top of the yellow, and then and then black line on so top of that. So still a limited palette. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of like at the beginning when I, I was getting rid of a lot of uh, textural objects and things that I was using my work and just getting a little simpler with my with my colors. That was around 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. And this one is, again, absolutely reduced. 
<clears throat> and I love this image because it shows clearly what is going on in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was originally for the New York Times, and um, it's been reprinted by the New York Times about four or five times by now. And it's been used on some um, posters um, for uh, anti-gun campaigns. What I what I try to do is get to the essence of the idea. Yeah. And anything that gets in the way of that, I, I take it out. <laughs> so if, if, if this idea had another color, it, it would take away from this main point. If I had white over here or yellow. Right. So... I follow, in, mo in most of my work, I'm, I'm just following the idea I'm following, even in my paintings. What is it that I'm trying to say? As far as I know, most of these ideas are your concepts. I'd say uh, most of them are uh, my ideas. Some of them, like the Meltdown one, they had a headline already. Okay. So they called me and said, we have a headline, Meltdown, and okay. we want his face melting. Okay. Uh, and okay. and they, they, they um, mentioned some work that I had done that had that drip technique. Okay. And then it was a matter of, you know, me figuring out how to, how to, how to make it. But that was before the election, right? Uh, that was, yeah, that was like two months before uh, the and election. And this was a week before this the election. This was, uh, yeah, about a week before well, the election. It was a great misunderstanding, wasn't um, it? Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, it, it actually looked like it was about to, you know, like he was going to lose. And then this went back and forth that week for a bit. You know, because they, they were thinking, let's do a follow-up to that one with the GOP logo, with the Republican logo, because it looked like the entire party was going to melt down. Mm -hmm. And I did that. And then two hours before the publication, <laughs> he calls like, you know, we changed our mind. Let, let's, let's do him just almost like totally smash down. And I came up with this idea of a puddle, but I had two hours to finish it, you know. Two hours? Yeah, oh. yeah. And then um, some of the other ones, you know, like uh, um, this one for Time Hate in America, I, I did a bunch of ideas. I did maybe like 10 different ideas and, and, and DW liked that one. The Spiegel is all my, you know, I sent in whatever ideas I had and they would pick from the set. Mm -hmm. That was the first one here mm -hmm. that I did. Uh, and then the, the other ones, this one actually was an image that I had put myself up on online on Twitter and it became so viral and, and such a uh, sort of sensation that they picked it up and I revised it a bit and they just published it directly. Um, this one I sent in um, the idea to Der Spiegel and to the editor and he liked it so much that he he's like, let's do that this week. They had something else in mind going on and they switched the cover story to this just because they loved that. That's, that's quite something. That, that's that image so much. Yeah. Not very often the case. Yeah. And then this one is something I had actually, the, um, the one is called uh, it's the, the Evolution. Yes. I had that for a year on my, you know, my, my computer, my sketches. And I always felt like it was way too much, <laughs> too far to go there to compare um, Trump to a, uh, you know, someone that had it involved and was still a monkey or something. But that week, that book came out and the book was so, um, sort of it said exactly who he was. Michael that Wolf. The timing, yeah, the, the Michael Wolf book, the timing seemed to be right. And I had sent about 10 ideas to Der Spiegel and nothing was quite clicking and I said well I have this thing <laughs> I think it might be too much and Klaus is like let me see it <laughs> he, he just wants to to really go out there and I sent it to him he's like we love it and we want to run that one I'm like wow right. okay here we go again um, and I think that's what makes the Der Spiegel covers really pop up and, 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 and get all this attention because it's really like a new way of looking at things. It's, it's, a, it's something that perhaps hasn't been seen before or that an artist might hold on to. And they're like, no, 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 let's put it, let's, let's go on the front page with it. It's something that probably wouldn't happen in the United States. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty Most strong. Definitely not. And this also that they, that Der Spiegel dared to print this one. <laughs> what I try to tell people is that, um, we illustrators have a lot of free time to imagine the impossible. Yes. <laughs> and we, we can imagine things a year ahead, two years ahead. Mm -hmm. And part of what happens with my work, and I think why it might be surprising or shocking, is that someone hasn't sat down to think what could happen. And I'm always doing that. I'm always thinking, well, this is happening now, but what if it goes here? What if it goes, what's the end result of this? And then I illustrate the end result, <laughs> but ahead of time. So I think that might be what's shocking people. It's like, whoa, how could you tell me that? That can't be possible. And then a year later- well, It's like a prophecy. Yeah, yeah. and then a year later they go, wow, you, you, you did it ahead of time. In, in this case and with this president, the worst always comes true, you know? Yes. 
But so. this image is very much related and strongly related to the ISIS work you did yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This was before Trump, right? Yeah, this is uh, back in 2014. I did this image, and then I actually did another image for a show uh, that I had the same year of this work that was this same graphic but with a knife, okay? Okay. When Trump um, had announced that he didn't want any um, uh, any people from Muslim countries to, to come to the United States anymore, um, and, you know, the Muslim ban, I was really kind of offended by it. So um, on a quick sort of angry thing, I, I, I just took that image and I stuck Trump's head on it and I put the Statue of Liberty on it, just on my computer, okay. and, I, and I threw that on the internet. And it, it just viral. really blew up a lot, mm -hmm. um, just for my own Twitter feed. This is also a difference to former times, that the internet yeah, gives yeah. you more opportunities to publish your work without asking anybody, I mean. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, what I, that's what I figured at some point, is it's, you know, having worked at a magazine, uh, I knew all the layers that you have to get through exactly. to get an image published. And I started thinking and imagining again <laughs> yes. that um, how can I sort of subvert this this thing and, and, and switch this around so that um, I didn't want this president and, and what's happening to be treated normally. And how magazines, I know magazines treat this is, is well, there's that, that point of view and there's this point of view and you kind of just treat everyone equally as different points of view and present them to the public. And I felt, well, how can I change that? How can I, as a person, do that? And I said, well, if I just start feeding this into the web, this idea that you can treat this man in a very strong manner, maybe that'll get into the bloodstream of editors and art directors, and they'll have me actually do it for them. So every day, I started posting some crazy thing <laughs> online. But DW called me and said, hey, I've been seeing what you're doing. <laughs> We want you to do something like that. I've been for, watching for, you. Yeah, I've been watching you. We want you to do something like that for us. And I'm like, yeah, okay. It's, okay. It, it hit. And uh, the same thing. Once the, the Time magazine came out, um, uh, Der Spiegel called and said, hey, we, we've been seeing what you've been doing online and we saw what, uh, what you did for Time. We want something with that amount of impact. And I'm like, well, I don't know how you duplicate impact. I can't really guarantee you that. And then I did the first cover for them and that had a lot of impact. It was the mm. cover of the year here in Germany too. Mm. Um, so uh, that's what I did with, with that image. I, 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 I actually just, you know, to me, uh, uh, Trump is more of a danger sometimes than, the, than these people. These people are over in the Middle East, but, but he's in my country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to me, the, the KKK and white supremacists are scarier in many ways mm -hmm. than what's happening over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to treat, give them a similar extremist sort of treatment. Mm -hmm. um, I put that online, it sort of went viral, and then Der Spiegel saw that and said, hey, we really like that. We want to put it on our cover. Then when they put that image of, of Trump beheading Statue of Liberty on their cover, it just, the audience went much more than my Twitter feed, you know, and, and, and when Der Spiegel puts it online, they put it up on a Friday night mm -hmm. at 6 p.m. And it, within five minutes, I had calls from the Washington Post, Whoa. BuzzFeed, a uh, bunch of newspapers wanting to interview me. And the first question is, did you do this? <laughs> did you dare to did do, you do this? this? Is this, are you the artist that did this? I'm like, yeah, that's me. And you could hear on the other line, like, quiet. Like, oh. Wow, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, that, that would be me. And, and then they asked me a few questions and they were just rushing to get the story online as soon as possible. And then they, they got in a hint of my bio that I was an immigrant. And this is you know the immigrant story that I was trying mm -hmm. to illustrate. And, and all of that got wrapped up and then you know, I think for about two months, I was getting regular calls from everywhere, from Spain, from Colombia, from Mexico, from Greece. Uh, people wanted to do stories about this. And then once that cover was so successful, then, then you can say, hey, I have an idea. <laughs> you know, and people question or, or ask me, how do I, am I, am I scared? Or what happens with this Trump work? I'm like, dude, I've been, I've been doing this stuff with Castro and, and like really serious military people and pushing that envelope with them for many years. And, and so I've been sort of like doing those sorts of things for a while. But this leads me to another thing. You were the art director of the International Time Magazine. Time Magazine was a the real art school for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I studied painting at, at, at Pratt, but when I arrived at Time uh, is where I really learned how illustration works. I started, um, we, we started hiring, I started hiring illustrators and sort of see the process of them, their sketches, how they promote their work. 
I learned a lot about cropping things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, especially on covers. Yes. Um, because when you're a painter and an artist, you know, you want to show the whole picture. Yes. But actually, when you were designing things, you mm -hmm. realize how much impact things have when you come up really tight on things, or even if you just move it to the left or to the right. So those subtle changes are things that I learned by working at Time Magazine and working with the art directors there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and reduced to the max, that's what, what we can see on this trump, and it's reduced to three colors, I mean actually four, but black, a little bit of white, orange, and yellow. Right. And, and you were using this palette all over again with different images of Trump, and I think these are all original ideas which were mm -hmm. not published yet, yeah. not on yeah, magazines? Yeah, these, these, these were all um, that I did myself and they, they went on the internet. Uh, this one, you know, what happened with this, <laughs> I, so I, I, I published this myself and then yeah. uh, at some point Der Spiegel started picking up my things and just putting them on, on Spiegel Online. That's one of them. Um, you know, part of the idea of, of minimizing the color was to create a bit of a brand. Yeah, it you is know, a that, brand. That, that, that people recognize it right away and then when you when you establish that brand, then you can kind of um, explode it. You know, you can you can you can destroy the brand too. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to do: is get it in people's head what this is, and then subvert that by putting it in different situations, stretching it, you know, doing something like that, uh, where yeah. it, does, it is not Trump, but people can recognize what I'm talking about. Um, so it's just these little symbols and, and, and little details and this mouth that just repeats yes. it gets in people's minds where and they know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, I was, so I was trying to see how far I could stretch the lightness, yeah. how I can um, sort of uh, do some artistic commentary on it or th go throughout history, uh, mm -hmm. historical references. And yeah, every time I do something, I, I kind of go, right, is anybody going to know what I'm talking about? <laughs> And I was surprised. I did that, and and that was a huge. Uh, everyone recognized it. I'm like, wow, people have a really good yes. um, sort of uh, um, sense of, of art history, you know. And now it's wonderful to introduce you to my band, Hong Kong Five, and we will have a live performance doing a piece of art within five minutes. And the band plays a song very much related to Donald Trump. Uh -huh. It's called Black Mirror. He's raining through through tweets, that's the story behind behind this song. And we're going to play it in, in the music studio. I would love to invite you there and make some music and performance together, okay? 